my daddy thought this lady, she should go out there like other women to get married and I'll get dowly. But I did extraordinarily. I started very small as home based with the only one machine. I had only one lady who was working with me. You see, women are the engine of the home. So the money which they get, it helps with the income of uh, the family. Taking children back to school, taking care of medical, buying food. In an economy like Tanzania or like Uganda or like Kenya, where you can feel that these countries are growing, but when you fail to empower 50% of your population to participate equally, you're losing out. The whole country's losing out. Gender occupational biases will still act as barrier for women to take their full potential. It was a difficult thing to do. Every time they'll tell you, Charity, this, this is not where you belong. Go back home. You belong to the kitchen. This is, was a male-dominant job, being a guide. And now I'm here, I need to work hard and show these people that it's possible. In Tanzania, you know, you're looking more at women who are very active in the informal sector. We were designing ourselves, cutting ourselves, stitching ourselves. So the income was just a mixing from home to my business. As they start to add and grow and become formalized, that's where you see those barriers for women. Lack of education, then they don't have the skills that they need to grow a business later in life. The training which made me to move forward quickly in five years. I'm feeling proud with my business because it is growing. And the main market is export in the USA, Spain, and Japan. You're looking at women in Uganda trying to farm an acre of land with one handheld hoe. If they had an ox plow, it would take them two days. How do you make women a little bit more productive in, in the time that they have and in the, the area they have? They say when you educate a woman, you educate the family. I think we should create a world where both men and women, they share the same cake. <laughs>